Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to go over an example for Thevenin and Norton equivalent circuit. Uh, in the last video, I talked about their theorem. So I talked about the Th Thevenin and Norton theorem and we, draw, we, we drew the um, Thevenin and Norton equivalent circuit. So right now, here, we're going to do this example. So this is an example. This is the circuit that we have. In this circuit, they asked us to go ahead and draw the Thevenin equivalent um, circuit at point A and B, okay? So let's look at this circuit. First, we have to find R Thevenin, right? And then we have to find V Thevenin. So for finding R Thevenin, that was equal to R Norton as well, what we did was we had to turn off the independent sources. So the imp independent sources that I have is one here, the 20 volt, there is another one over here, five amp, and there's the 30 volt over here um, as a voltage source. So if I want to turn them off, it means that I have to, let's just draw the circuit without the um, independent circuit independent um, sources. So here we have this 20 and then we know that the voltage source when we turn it off it will become a um, short circuit and the current source will become an open circuit. And then here we have a 10 and this voltage source will, will also be equal to zero. Okay. All right. So this is my circuit now. The circuit that I have to find the R Thevenin in it. So I turned off again all the um, equivalent, all the independent sources, and then I have to find the equivalent resistance over here. And this is point A and point B. Okay. So let's see how I can find the equivalent. Um, Resistor, the resistance over here. If you look here, this resistor and this resistor, they are in parallel, right? So the parallel of 20 and 20, let's just write it over here. So we know that the 20 ohm is in parallel with the other 20. So it will be equal to 10. It is 20 multiplied by 20 over 40. And that will give me 10. So the equivalent of 20 and 20 in parallel will be a 10. So what I will be left with, I will be left with another 10 over here. Then I have this 10, which is the equivalent of 20 and 20 in parallel. And then we have three other 10s over here. All right. So in all the, um, in all your questions, it's always better to go ahead and draw the um, equivalent circuit for each step. In my opinion, this really helps because you won't get confused and um, things won't be like all over the place. That's why in each step I am actually drawing the um, equivalent circuit. Now, over here, if you look, it's not that easy to find parallel or um, series resistances, right? If you remember from electrical circuits, we had a delta and y configuration for the resistances, right? So here, over here, these three resistances is a y, res a y configuration, right? So I want to change the y configuration to a delta configuration. What does that mean? Let me go ahead and talk about the delta and y for a second. So here I have a Y configuration and I want to convert it to a delta configuration. It means that the way that the resistors are connected will be changed and they will be in a delta shape instead of Y shape. And then at the same time, we have to calculate the new resistances over there. So in the delta and Y configuration, what we had was this was our Y And then the delta would become like this. Okay. 
why did I even choose to do the delta and y transformation? Because if you look at this circuit over here, or actually this whole circuit over here, it is not that easy to find again um, the parallel and series resistances. So I have to do something. So I have to approach the question in another way. Okay, so for delta, for y, this was R3, this was R1 and R2. And when we convert this to a delta, that would become RA, RB, and RC. And then this RA, RB, and RC, they have a, um, an equation, each of them. So RA is equal to R1, R2 plus R1, R3 plus R2, R3 over R1, okay? Then RB is actually the same numerator, so the numerator will be exactly the same. The denominator would be R2, and RC is, again, the same exact numerator, but over R3. So I'm going to draw this over here. All right. Now, in my circuit, the Y that I have is actually the other way around of the Y that I use in the transformation, right? So let's use um, this transformation method to convert this Y configuration into a delta configuration. So you see that if I have the Y in this configuration, the delta will be like this. So if I have it in this configuration, the delta will be upside down. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to go ahead and draw my equivalent circuit. So we're going to have a delta in the middle. So this will be delta, uh, one, one side of the delta. And then I'm going to have another side over here and another side over here. Okay, so this is RC, then I have RA and RB. Now the rest of my circuit. The rest of the circuit, we had a resistance and another resistance over here. This is 10, this is 10, and this was point A and point B. Now, see all that, the red part here, that I drew a line, which was a Y, it became this delta. Okay? Now I have to find our A, our B, and our C in order to find those um, variables that I have in this circuit. <coughs> okay. So let's see over here. Our A. We said that RA is equal to R1, R2 multiplied by R1, R3 multiplied by R2, R3. You see that we all of them are equal to 10. So what we have is 100 plus 100 because each 10 multiplied by another 10 will be 100. Over for RA, I'm going to have R1, which is 10. That would be 30. And this is, since RA, RB, and RC are equal to each other, then RB is equal to RC and equal to 30. Okay? So instead of the RA, RB, and RC in my circuit, I'm going to go ahead and write the values. So here I have a 30, a 30, and another 30. Okay? Now, here in this circuit that I transferred the Y configuration into, into a delta configuration, it's way easier to find the equivalent resistance. Why? Because over here, I can easily say that these two resistances are in parallel and these two resistances are in parallel as well. Okay? So what I'm going to do over here, again, I'm going to draw the equivalent circuit. So I'm going to have a 30 on top. Then 30 and 10 we said that 30 and 10, so these two are in parallel. So the equivalent resistance of these two will be 30 multiplied by 10 over 30 plus 10, and that would give me 7.5. <coughs> so 
I'm going to have a 7.5 over here and another 7.5 because on the other side 10 and 30 are in parallel as well and then we have A and B so it's better to actually draw A and B like this A and B so points A and B are these two points okay now what is the relationship between 30, 7.5 and 7.5? It's obvious that these two 7.5s are in series. So those two 7.5s will give me a 15, right? They're in series. And then both of them, which we added them together and they, it became um, 15, then we're going to have this 30 over here and then 15 and 30 are clearly in parallel okay so rab which is my r tevenin is equal to 15 in parallel with 30 and that will give us 10 off. okay so here we found r tevenin we still need to go ahead and find v tevenin as well so whenever you have a circuit and they ask you to um, draw the Thevenin equivalent circuit it means that we need to find our Thevenin and we need to find V Thevenin okay so let's find our Thevenin, uh, v Thevenin over here so for our Thevenin we turned off all the independent sources now I have to turn them on again because here I want to find the um, V Thevenin so I'm going to go ahead, draw my circuit, and also turn the independent sources on. So we're going to have actually this should be over here. Okay, this is negative positive 20. We have another 20 over here, another 20, 10, 5, 10, 10, 30, and 10. And then here we have point A, VA, and VB. So how can I find V7 and VAB is equal to V open circuit? Okay. So I have to find V open circuit and that is equal to V Thevenin. So we know that in um, finding the Thevenin equivalent circuit or Norton equivalent circuit, uh, for finding the voltage or the current for Norton, we have to <clears throat> either, uh, for the voltage actually, we have to open circuit the load. For the current, we have to short circuit the load. Okay, here they didn't show us the load, but we know that the load will be connected to part two points A and B. All right, so here, if I had this one, these two, as a voltage source, that would make everything easier, right? So it would make way, things will be way easier over here. So what I'm going to do, we know that if I have a current source, in parallel with a resistance, I can draw it as a voltage source in series with a resistance, right? So I'm going to just delete this part and I'm going to draw the equivalent of those two. So a resistance in series with a voltage source. Now, what are the values? The resistance is the same. The current source was 5. 5 multiplied by R will give us the voltage so that is a 50 volts okay this is important now so here I found this part of the circuit now let's see if I can make the circuit easier so the easier the circuit you will have less um, confusion when you are um, finding out what's going on with the circuit okay so let's see here I have a 20 oh, and this 20 
is they are in <clears throat> series with each other. So what I can do, <clears throat> I can go ahead and draw this part of the circuit, this part which is in green. I can write it as the resistance in parallel with a current source in parallel with another resistance. Why did I do that? You will see why in a second. So this will be 20. Then what is the value for the current source? So my voltage source is 20. The resistance is 20. What would be the current? We have I equal to V over R. 20 over 20 is 1 amp. And then we have another 20. Okay, so this green part will be like this. If I want to simplify this green part, I can say that the 20 and the 20 are in parallel with each other, right? So I'm going to have 20 and 20 in parallel, which will be equal to 10. And then we're going to have them in parallel with the current source. So we have one app. Now I can again transfer this to a resistance in series with a voltage source. And how can I define the um, direction of the, uh, actually the polarity of the voltage source? So the current is going from left to right, so we're going to have negative, positive. Then the value would be 1 multiplied by 10, so we're going to have 10 volts, and 20 was my, actually 10 is my, I'm um, sorry. 10 is the resistance okay so all that green part here that I drew a line it become like this one the resistance in series with the voltage so I'm going to go ahead and substitute that part of the circuit with this simplified version so this the, as I said again you have to simplify the circuit as much as you can if it is possible in the circuit then you will be more comfortable doing the um, analysis so over here, I have a 10. Instead of that green line, we have a 10 in series with a voltage source. Then we're going to have another resistance over here. Voltage source. Over here and a resistance and a voltage source over here. So the values that I have are 10, negative, positive 10. Here we have 10, 10, 50. So these values are the ones that we have in the original circuit. 10 and positive negative 30. Now, why did I do that? Because I need to find the V open circuit. So I open circuit at the load. So here I need to find out what is VA and VB. And then I can find VAB because we know that VAB is equal to VA minus VB. Okay? Okay, let's just analyze the circuit. This is easy, right? Because here I can write a KVL. Here I can write a KVL. I can also write a B KVL over here. Okay? So here we have I1 and here we have I2 in the second loop. So I'm going to go ahead and write the <coughs> equations. So first I'm going to write an equation for loop 1. So in loop 1 I have negative 30 plus 10 I1 plus 10 again I1 plus 10 multiplied by I1 minus I2 plus 50 equal to 6 okay so this would give me what this would give me 30 I1 minus 10 I2 plus 20 equal to 0 so this is one of the equations. So in order to find VA and VB, I need to find actually the currents I1 and I2. Okay, now let's write a KVL in the, big, the biggest loop. 
that we have, the big arrow that I drew. So if I want to write that, that would be negative 30 plus 20 I want. Now I am over here. So I came from here all the way to here. Now, here it's a big loop, so I have to go over here. So 10 I2 plus 10. So that would be plus 10 I2. Okay, so this was a mistake. This should be negative 10 because the polarity of the voltage source over here is negative positive. Okay, negative 10 plus 10 I2 equal to 0. So I can write this as 20 I1, this equation as 20 I1 plus 20 I2 minus 40 equal to zero okay let's also write a an equation for the second loop as well so the second loop is negative 50 plus 10 multiplied by i2 minus i1 plus 10 i2 minus 10 plus 10 i2 equal to zero so i'm gonna have 30 30 i2 minus 10 i1 minus 60 equal to zero okay so i'm going to choose the first equation and the second equation in order to find i1 and i2 okay it doesn't matter which whichever that you're comfortable with so from this equation i can say that 10 i1 is equal to 30 i2 minus 60 I will divide everything by a 10, so I1 is equal to 3I2 minus 6. Now, the first equation over here, if I divide everything by 10, both sides of the equation, I'm going to have 3I1 minus I2 plus 2 equal to 0. So I'm going to substitute I1 over here. Okay, so 3 multiplied by 3 is 9 i2 minus 18 minus i2 plus 2 equal to 0 so 8 i2 actually not 8 it is negative sorry oh no we're good we're good we're good 8 i2 minus 16 is equal to 0 so from here i2 will be 2 amps if I2 is 2 amp, let's see what will happen to I1. I1 will be equal to 6 minus 6 is equal to 0 amp. Okay? It means that we don't have any um, current in the side of the circuit. This side. But it doesn't mean that, uh, for example, we don't have... Actually, we have voltage between these two points. Still. Okay, now how can I find VA and VB? So I do have I2 and I do have I1, right? Let's go ahead and look at here. VA is the voltage over here, right? So that voltage VA minus 30 over 10 this should be equal to I1. Why? Because I1, we said that, is the current that is passing through this branch. And then finding the current in that branch will give us this equation. Okay? So I1 is equal to 0. So from here, we can say that, okay, VA minus 30 is equal to 0. So VA is equal to 30 volts and then VB is the voltage in this branch so in that branch current is in this way right so it will be VA the VB minus 0 over 10 now and that would be equal to I2 so from here VB is equal to 10 multiplied by i2 is 20 volts 
Over here, see we said that the current looks like this. So it's going from the ground to VA, right? So that will be a negative over here multiplied by everything. So it's negative, positive. You have negative, positive, so VA is negative 30. Okay? Now, from here I have VA, VB, and we said that VAB, which is my V open circuit, is equal to VA, that is negative 30, plus VB, which is 20, and that will give us negative 10 volts. Okay? So, I have V Tevenant and I found R Tevenant as well that was equal to, which was the R Tevenant, here, it was equal to 10. So now I have to draw the Tevenant equivalent circuit. So the Tevenant equivalent circuit, as we said, we have a resistor in series with a voltage source and then we're going to have the load. So we don't know what the load is, we only have points A and B, R Tevenant is equal to 10 v tevenant is equal to negative 10 volts so you see all these big circuits over here it became this simple circuit okay all right so i hope you understood this question if you have any questions please uh, write them in the comments down below and i will see you in the next video thanks for watching